What's good, BitRushers? My name's Kyler, and you're watching BitRush Crypto. This is another weekly edition of our news and NFT updates, any upcoming projects we're looking at, and any updates on things we've recently purchased. If you guys are new, make sure you sub to the channel. You can find links in the description below for my social media and my free Telegram chat group, as well as the links for all of today's news. Go ahead and pound that thumbs up button and let's get into the video. Starting out the news for today, we do have some positive crypto integrations coming from Twitter. We can see here, here Tess Renierson. I'm thrilled to share that I've joined Twitter to lead a new team focused on crypto, blockchains, and other decentralized technologies, including and going beyond cryptocurrencies. So I'd assume that means something to do with NFTs. We already know they have plans to integrate with NFTs and they're now bringing on a project lead, which is really good news, guys. Hopefully we'll see some um, really cool Twitter integrations in the next couple of months into Q1, Q2 of next year. And speaking of social media integrations, we did have Discord coming out here and saying they had plans of Ethereum integrations and immediately the community, um, there was like a whole bunch of outrage from the community and they backlashed. And so then they pulled back and said, we're not doing anything. We're just kind of testing. Um, so we'll just show you guys this here. The owner did tweet out right here that they were integrating and they have the Discord plus Ethereum with the MetaMask and Wallet Connect. And uh, it doesn't show the other tweets here, but like I said, almost instantly a bunch of people just kind of like got on them and attacked them. And it's actually kind of good news for anybody in the NFT space or in cryptocurrency, guys, because this shows you how early you still are. I know a lot of times we look at how much the prices have moved and how much things have gone up and wish we had got in earlier that we missed the boat. But literally, there's still an entire online community that thinks cryptocurrency and NFTs are a scam. Um, that just shows you how early we really are to the market, guys. OK, um, so I think eventually they will kind of roll this out and they'll just do a little bit better PR and better announcement of it and not just like a leak here like he did. And hopefully with a little bit better news and maybe like some sort of product development or game integrations with that news, it would go better. Um, but yeah, I definitely think they're working on stuff and whether or not they say they're going to do it or not, um, they're definitely working. So good news to see that Discord is one of the top social media things in NFTs and cryptocurrency. A lot of the communities are based around Discord, so it's good to see they are integrating. Next, we have some good news from Flow Blockchain and Rarible. And if you're not familiar with what Flow is, it is the blockchain from Dapper Labs, the people that made CryptoKitties and NBA Top Shots and are working on a bunch of other cool games and projects. So they do now have that they're excited to announce it's launched its Flow integration with Rarible. So you'll now be able to buy some of these Flow NFTs on the Rarible marketplace. Good news for both Rarible and Flow if you hold any one of those tokens. In general, Flow is going to be a big blockchain player in the NFT space, so it's good to see that they're starting to integrate. We should see more stuff from them soon. Moving to a little bit more of like a publicity stunt here, we do have Rolling Stone is getting into NFTs and they've partnered with the Bored Ape Yacht Club. So you guys can see here, they're going to auction off its first ever NFT magazine covers via Super Rare. And we do have some pictures right here. One is the Mutant Ape Rolling Stone. Um, that one looks really cool to me. And then just the regular one with the, um, you know, the boat hat and the, um, Hawaiian shirt with the cigar with some bananas. So both of those are really cool. I think um, as far as like a collector, if you're a Board Ape Yacht Club collector or a Rolling Stone fan, uh, I think this is going to be good. Good publicity in general, guys, to get this out to the mainstream. This just shows you how big NFTs are, even though so many people like we just saw in the last um, article here from Discord are still thinking it's a scam. Um, we also have on the flip side of things, big brands like Rolling Stone pushing this out as a magazine cover. So really great news there. And another kind of cool thing that the Board Ape Yacht Club is doing is there is someone who owns a few Board Ape Yacht Clubs and and some mutant apes and they're putting together a band uh, so this is the these are the guys right here 
these are their NFTs right here that are going to become like this digital band. Um, I think they're going to try to do something kind of like uh, the Gorillas did. If you don't remember back in the day, the Gorillas um, used to have like a group that was all members. I believe they were from Berkeley or some sort of music school or something like that. And none of them wanted to release their identity. So they all had like cartoon gorilla avatars. Um, but they were real musicians. So I think they're trying to do something similar to that with the Board Ape Yacht Club, where they're going to have like real musicians behind some of these people. And they're just going to be like a music group that does digital performances as the actual apes. So that's kind of cool. Um, just cool to see things being pushed, the boundaries being pushed, new innovation, um, people doing new and different interesting things. So I like that. Good news. Bullish for the NFT marketplace. And that's everything for this week's news. Okay, guys, again, for this part on upcoming NFT projects, always do your own due diligence, always do your own research, never invest more money than you can personally afford to lose. I'm just showing you some of the projects that I think are cool that are upcoming. I may or may not buy them. Um, I don't have a lot of time right now to do a super ton of research into upcoming projects. And there's just absolutely a ton of projects that are releasing. So it's kind of like a weird dichotomy where um, there's way more projects now and I have a lot less time. So I'll pull out a few projects that I think look cool. However, guys, again, always do your own due diligence, your own research. Not every project will be a Board Ape Yacht Club. All right, so the first project I want to look at today is clonex.rtfkt.com. And I'm not super familiar with this brand, but I did do a little research and it looks like they have some other um, NFT projects already out and on the marketplace and they seem to be, you know, doing well. So hopefully this project will also do well since it is backed by that team. And this is now their avatar project, Clone X, and it says launch early to mid November. So just coming down, let's read a little bit of more about it. It says CloneX is our most ambitious project yet, the beginning of a whole ecosystem for our community, quality focused, high end avatars ready for the metaverse. Okay, and they have a nice little backstory here. I'm not gonna read everything off the website, but definitely come over here and do some research and read a little bit more about the project, watch the video, um, but showing you guys here, we do see that there are eight DNA types and there's going to be a max of 20,000 avatars available. Okay, so this is actually double what most of the high-end projects are doing. Kind of the industry standard right now is about 10,000 or less. Um, so these guys are doubling it, so that is ambitious. It's good to see because the more avatars you have, the more possible people into your community that you can get. So it does lead to some possibilities for larger growth as a community as a whole. However, um, it also could be the flip where they don't sell out necessarily as quick or there's a whole lot more in the marketplace. So just something to keep in mind there. The pre-sale is going to be uh, 10,000 of them at 0.5 Ethereum. So if you guys want, you can get over here and try to get in. But I do believe that we are pretty close to the mint date. Let's see if it says, I'm not sure if it says it here, but I think it's in the next couple days. And then we're going to have a public sale, which the price hasn't actually been announced yet. Kind of weird. They haven't announced the price. But again, they do have another 10,000 available for the public sale after the 10,000 on the pre-sale. Again, these are pretty high numbers, um, but hopefully they are able to sell out because the project does look super cool and just showing you right here that they are in collaboration with this artist uh, murakami i believe is how you say that i'm sorry i'm horrible with pronunciations um, but you can see here he has some really cool artwork and just in general all of the stuff that i'm seeing here in the background looks amazing guys so um, cool 3d stuff and then coming into the actual roadmap here where we can read a little bit more about it it says we built a clone uh, meta vault to give you access to 3d files to use across platforms so that's really cool um, i'm not sure where it was but i thought i saw that there was like 10 different file types or something like that like five different file types that you're going to be able to download and use these so you can upload them and integrate them into all different games and metaverses and all different things like that so that's really sweet cool to see um, again, they have a forging event. We're going to be able to like create different things and get a um, jacket in real life. So that's pretty amazing. Imagine having one of those pimp jackets like the octopus one this creator guy was wearing right here. Um, if you send me one of those jackets, that would be amazing. Um, no promises, guys. Just saying. 
and we also have Clonex wearables, so they're gonna be creating cool wearables for your actual Clonex avatar, and then special access to some of the other stuff. Um, so how you guys can get in right here, and there's the vault, okay, that's what I was saying, yeah, so it's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different file types there that you guys are gonna have access to. Uh, but the way we're able to get access to the presale, as I was mentioning, is one, you need to register your wallet, and two, you need to own um, one of their other qualifying NFTs. And this is how I was able to find out a little bit more about who these guys are and some of their other projects. So we do see some of them here. Um, there's a few more if you guys want. So you just need to own any one of these qualifying NFTs and then sync up and you can get in that presale. Next, we have another uh, 3D avatar project. This one is gonna be on the Solana blockchain and this one is a female avatar project called Meta Waifus. So they're 3D characters for the, the NFT metaverse revolution and they look pretty sweet, badass, almost like, um, like badass Barbie dolls. Um, so I think that's something that will probably be popular amongst the female uh, NFT crowd. I may pick one up for my wife. I might get a couple for myself just as a collector, uh, just because they look super badass. Again, this is something we haven't really seen. We've kind of seen stuff like this with uh, more like the younger people, like with the mods or um, G evils and things like that, but we haven't really seen a female version. So I do think this should be um, super sweet. And just again, looking at some of the ones they're flashing here with like the eyes and the hair, um, they just look badass. Uh, more more information about the project, what is MetaWayFoos? Basically, it's a premier 3D NFT project, a collection of 56,000 NFTs living on the Solana blockchain, and each NFT represents a 3D character usable in their metaverse. So each one was rendered as an in-game character, so you're gonna get to use your actual NFT avatar in the game, which is amazing and you'll get access to some other stuff that's exclusive within their ecosystem. So again, guys, come over here and do your own research and you know read a little bit more about the roadmap. They do have a few things on here, such as a play to earn game and the 3D animated episodes that look pretty interesting to me. And there's obviously an FAQ that you guys can read and find out any more information that I haven't already gone over or you want to find out. And if it's not there, then join up on their Discord or holler at them on Twitter. That's everything for the projects I'm looking at for this week. Getting into the projects that I've recently purchased, guys, I actually haven't bought anything since my last video on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, I did make a play on one of the um, the number 10 issue of the first series Huxley Saga comic. Um, I didn't have enough ETH to bid for that. Did end up going for like 3.6. I only had about 1.5 to put up on that. So congrats to the winner. But other than that, I've just been purchasing a few NFTs over here on Immutable X. I do have two videos that I launched this past week on Immutable, one covering just generally what the project is and the coin and the token IMX and why you might want to hold it, and another one on bridging your Ethereum over to the IMX layer two and using it to buy some NFTs off the marketplace here. So definitely go back and watch those videos if you guys want a little bit more information about what I'm doing over here with IMX and why I think it's so special. However, I did pick up a few NFTs this week. I got two Moody Crows, which were the first PFP project over here on IMX Layer 2. I also got one of the Baby Crows, and I picked up a few of these Guild of the Guardian Heroes. They were actually kind of cheap, and I thought I would just purchase a few of them with a little bit extra eat that I had left over. And I also picked up one of these Battle Factions, okay? I'm planning on bridging over some more Ethereum to IMX, and I definitely plan on purchasing more projects as they start to come onto the network. If we look back historically, almost all the chains that started doing NFTs, the very first projects, the early innovators, people end up going back and repurchasing these from a collector standpoint, and they always end up holding a high value um, you know, a few years later down the road. So if you're looking for a long NFT play on an up and coming network, I do think IMX is a good call. Again, guys, do your own research, do your own due diligence, not financial advice.
that's everything for today's weekly update and news. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. If so, please do smash the thumbs up on the video, share it on social media, leave me a comment, let me know what projects I missed this week or anything you'd like to see me cover. Happy crypto, and let's keep getting those coins.